Welcome to Cases of Mistaken Identity. These tutorials are based on real questions asked by my medical and dental students over the years. This is Case 6, Pancreas or Parotid Gland. I'm Dr. Katherine Moore, the Histology Wizard. Learning to distinguish between sections of these two very similar organs on a slide can be challenging. My students sometimes confuse the pancreas with the parotid gland. Let's investigate. We'll start with what these two glands have in common. The pancreas and salivary glands have similar anatomical structures and physiological functions. They produce bicarbonate-rich fluid that contains digestive enzymes and other components to be delivered into the gut. They're both surrounded by a fibrous connective tissue capsule that sends septa inward to subdivide the gland into lobules. They're both exocrine glands, in which every exocrine secretory cell has some portion of its plasma membrane that's exposed to an external surface and communicating with the outside of the body by a system of ducts. The pancreas and parotid glands are classified as compound or branched alveolar or acinar glands with a merocrine or exocytotic type of secretion. They both contain secretory units called acini, which look a lot like grapes that are connected by a series of ducts. So first we see the intercalated duct, which is like that stem coming out of an individual grape, and then there are a series of larger ducts. Now let's look more closely at the acinar unit by taking a cross section through the top of one grape. In the parotid and pancreas glands, the acinar unit consists of serous cells, which means that the secretory product is also called serous and that means that the protein products are secreted in vesicles. If we take a closer look at a single serous cell, we can see that it has a basophilic basal cytoplasm, a centrally located nucleus, and variously staining secretory vesicles, or zymogen granules, in its apical cytoplasm. And I've shown them here in pink, since in both of these glands, the granules tend to appear eosinophilic when using routine light microscopy. And you can see that in this section of the pancreas, where these granules or vesicles look bright pink. Now these features are all associated with organized mass production of protein for export. So these cells are essentially enzyme factories. Okay, that's what these two glands have in common, and I think you can understand why they might be confused for one another. So how in the world do we tell these two glands apart? Well, there are four characteristics that can be used to help distinguish the pancreas from the parotid. I'll list them here first in alphabetical order, and then we'll look at each one a bit more closely. So first we can look at the amount of stromal fat, since adipocytes are more common in the stroma of the parotid gland. Next, we have central acinar cells, which are the cells that form the initial portion of the intercalated ducts in the pancreas. Third, we have the islets of Langerhans that are found only in the pancreas, because it's also an endocrine organ, in contrast to the parotid or the other major salivary glands, which are entirely exocrine organs. And finally, we can look for striated ducts, a type of intralobular duct that's found only in salivary glands. We'll start by taking a closer look at the pancreas. So by far the easiest way to tell these two organs apart is to look for the pancreatic islets, or the islets of Langerhans. On the left here, you see a cartoon showing an islet, and here you can see two islets in the midst of the acini of the exocrine pancreas. These islets consist of multiple spherical groups of epithelial cells, and they're essentially embedded as nodules in the exocrine pancreas. The cells are arranged in kind of irregular cords, wham, or clumps, and they're surrounded by a rich capillary plexus. That's where the hormones go. And they are almost always paler staining than the acinar cells. Now note that these islets are not separated from the acinar tissue by any kind of connective tissue capsule. What's the function of these islets? That's to control carbohydrate metabolism. And as you can see by these different colored cells in this cartoon, the islets contain different cell types that produce different hormones. And the most important, or perhaps the most familiar, are insulin and glucagon. Now this distinguishing feature of the pancreas is super useful. But what if we happen to be looking at an area in the pancreas that doesn't have an islet? I don't know, maybe on a test or something. What else can we look for? Well, one feature is the presence of centroacinar cells. The cartoon on the left illustrates that these cells are actually part of the intercalated duct, 
And remember, that's like that little stem coming out of a single grape. So we find these cuboidal shaped cells present at the junction between the acinus and the ductal cells of the intercalated duct. It's in the center, or they are in the center of the acinus, hence their name. Here are a couple of different examples. You can see that these cells are morphologically distinct from and smaller than acinar cells. They're also much paler than the acinar cells. The trick with using these cells to distinguish the pancreas from the product is that you can't always see them in every single acinus, so you can see I've only pointed to a couple of examples here. Usually there are enough to help you make the distinction. Okay, okay, but Dr. Moore, what happens when I'm looking at a section of the pancreas and I don't see any islets and I really have trouble identifying central acinar cells? Well, that's exactly when folks do mistake this gland for the parotid gland. So now let's go ahead and check out a couple of features that are unique to the parotid gland. The first and probably easiest feature to look for is fat, or adipocytes. The pancreas and parotid gland differ in the amount of stromal fat, with adipocytes much more common in the stroma of the parotid, but fairly rare in the pancreas. And this is especially true of the aging parotid gland. The second distinguishing feature of the parotid gland, well, all of the major salivary glands really, is the striated duct. Within each lobule, there are several prominent ducts with more distinct lumen. So they stand out sharply from the surrounding acini, and they also are more acidophilic. These are the striated ducts, which are considered intralobular ducts, and that means they're still within the parenchyma of the lobe. They're not in the connective tissue between the lobes. Now these duct cells of the striated ducts have a folded basal membrane and it looks almost striated. And all that really means is that they almost look like they have stripes or parallel streaks. And you can see these striations more easily in this magnified image. Now why do salivary glands need these ducts? Well, we don't want to lose important ions. Specifically, we don't want to lose sodium in our saliva. So these membrane folds enable active transport of substances out of the duct. Water resorption and ion secretion take place in these ducts to make our saliva hypotonic, that is, we have reduced sodium and chloride ions. You should now be able to better recognize the pancreas by the islets of Langerhans and the central acinar cells and contrast them to the increased amount of adipose tissue and the striated ducts of the parotid gland. I hope these tips will help you solve this case of mistaken identity. Thanks for stopping by. Be sure to check out my other cases of mistaken identity.